Okay, hello everyone. We have a story that happened today in Queens Village that got ignored by the media today because everybody was so addicted to the breaking news that they found the remains of Brian Laundrie that this important local news story in Queens got ignored today. So let's talk about it because there's nowhere else online that... it. I, I literally looked up Van Buren High School in Queens Village. Nothing on New York One's website. Nothing on the Queens Courier. You even Google it. Nothing comes up. Just nothing. So let's see what Laura Uhl posted. So it says here that Van Buren High School police from the 105 precinct reported to this incident earlier today. A student was in custody for weapon possession. The student attends the B-Tech, which is located in the same building. The building was on lockdown, and then the building was lifted off a of lockdown. There were police helicopters in the area. So, nothing about it on New York 1. Nothing about it in the Queen's Courier, because you know what it is. You know, you know what everyone is addicted to today. It's quite quite obvious what what happened today quite obvious you know what they're all addicted about today go on the home page google news and this is what will come up ryan laundry like you know it's a little bit of a conclusion to it but you know i wanted to know what happened to fam year in high school they're not going to say the name of the suspect because we don't know if the suspect's a juvenile and he has every right to privacy. But, you know, it's very disturbing. So I'll show you where this high school is. And, you know, this school is not in a good area. Let me tell you right now. I mean, you're literally right by Creedmoor. So that just tells you how alarming that, uh, you know, this is not really a safe area in general. So just finding out that this happened here today just proves that, you know, the media just can't seem to get its priorities in check. Well, here we go. Let's check New York One's website. Well, they had a debate in Eric Ulrich's City Council District tonight, which we're not even going to talk about that because that will completely get off topic from this video. But, you know, I don't want to yell about it. I don't want to, you know, say I'm irate. Just because I feel so bad for the students who went through a, a very scary situation today. I mean, I would not want to have to go through their situation worrying. Like, something like that would ever happen. But, you know, this should have been covered. Should have been covered. I mean, the parents... Had every right to know what was going on. You know, the problem was the media just didn't cover it. That's the problem. And this could have been a worse situation today. A worse situation where this could have made national headlines. So thank goodness it didn't escalate to something big. Because according to Laura Uhl, um, there was a suspect who was placed in custody. So that's good news. Nothing on public safety about it. Nothing. However, they spent two minutes talking about a uh, stabbing of a Manhattan deli worker. Interesting, huh? Very interesting. Now, there are other forgotten stories that New York One didn't cover either. In fact, let's talk about this. This is very alarming. This should have been covered. Broad daylight shooting in Jamaica. Homicide detectives swarmed into an area of Jamaica where a man was shot and killed in broad daylight on the afternoon of October 19th. Police from the 103rd Precinct responded to a 911 call of an assault in front of a hair salon at 89-32 163rd Street around 3 p.m. when they discovered a victim lying unconscious and unresponsive on the sidewalk in front of the salon with a gunshot wound to the head, according to the NYPD. The gunman fled on foot in an unknown direction. So, very alarming. Broad daylight homicide shooting. 
that was not covered. The man was taken to Jamaica Hospital, so that's what we're looking for in that most important detail. So, there is a suspect description. We know that there is a black man wanted dressed in black clothing. That's all we know right now. That's all we know. And then we got to talk about this. And this is not too far from where Osnum Hall is. See? Right where I work. Right there. That's Osnum Hall right there. And thankfully I have talked to my residents about this. And they have told me that they have heard the drag racing at night. But it doesn't bother them as much. So that's good news. But the other residents, you know, I feel bad for them. I really do feel bad for them. And New York one actually did a good job covering this. They actually spent almost three minutes um, last weekend talking about this. Hundreds of Dwarvenale residents and small business owners rallied on October 16th for the shutdown of a rotty neighborhood lounge that has been disrupting the quality of life in the area for the past eight months. Residents gathered outside of the Cloud Tequila Gill, uh, Grill Silk Hookah Lounge at 192-08 Northern Boulevard. And again, right by where Osdom Hall Nursing Home is. The residents voiced their frustrations about inappropriate illegal activity as occurring outside of the lounge. The door of this office, president of the Auburndale Northern Association, said Cloud Tequila Grill is destroying our neighborhood and putting our safety at risk. And yes, it's not good also for the employees and residents of the nursing home nearby. So that's another factor that they need to consider as well. So there you go. So, the duelist says we can't sleep because of loud music and screaming until 5 a.m. every day. The constant noise, drag racing, garbage, and sexual activity outside of our house is affecting our health and neighborhood safety. Even though they are operating without a liquor license, none of our many 311 complaints or calls to the police have made a difference. City Hall must shut down this location now. There they were protesting. So let's see. According to the residents, the incident at Cloud Cotilla take place on a daily basis, seven days a week, much of it occurring from midnight to 3 a.m. Despite numerous complaints to government agencies and law enforcement, residents say nothing has been changed. So the ANA has launched an online petition. So I know John Liu was rallying outside of this location. And, you know, in the Ormondale section, you have a lot of the Asian community. So if you're looking at it west of 188th Street, that's where the Asian community is, a majority of them. And then you go east of... Francis Lewis Boulevard, traditionally, it's Irish in that area. So, yeah, so targeting the Asian community west of Francis Lewis. Look at that. Another example of our quality of life just deteriorating each day. But as I said, New York One did a good job covering it. So, there was another story that... Uh, Disturbed me as well. There's like two more I saw on here. Police search for gunman who fired shot in front of Queens Criminal Court. Happened right by Borough President Donovan Richards' office. So, this incident happened just after noon on Wednesday, October 13th. And this is not too far also from where the Queens County Board of Elections is. So here we go. Investigators say the suspect displayed a firearm and fired off at least one shot in front of Queens Criminal Court at 120-55 Queens Boulevard alongside Borough Hall. No victims were located in regard to the incident. The NYPD has released a surveillance image of the suspect who was wearing a blue tracksuit 
white stripes down the sleeves and white sneakers. He was also wearing white sneakers. So that's a little bit of a typo. No arrest, ongoing investigation. So take a look, folks. Looks can be deceiving. You would never think this person would be a suspect the way uh, the way he looks. The cops are looking for this guy. Okay. And one more I'm going to read here. Body of an 81-year-old man discovered aboard the Q56 bus in Jamaica. Police from the 103rd Precinct responded to a 911 call regarding an unconscious rider on a Q56 bus that happened on Saturday, October 16th. The NYPD discovered the dead body of an 81-year-old man. The man was aboard a Q56 bus at the corner of 170th Street in Jamaica Avenue just before 8 p.m. and found to be unconscious and unresponsive with no apparent trauma. EMS responded to have seen the man was pronounced dead. A statement from an NYPD spokeswoman on Monday, October 18th said, The medical examiner will determine the cause of the death. There's an investigation ongoing. The name of the deceased is being withheld pending identification and family notification. So, very scary situation that a dead corpse was just found on a bus and New York one didn't even cover that either. Very disturbing. Very disturbing. Just like how, again, there was a shooting in Kew Gardens that should have been covered. Nope. Let's take a look at Ham New York to see what else is there to, uh, there to see. I will give credit to Melinda Katz. I... I was wrong about her. She's actually been a very proactive district attorney. Look at this. The Queens DA and NYPD bus man with arsenal of ghost guns. So, let's see where this happened. So, let's see. I mean, look at that. Illegal firearms. I just want to see where this... um. We're going to see where this happens. Okay, so all these firearms belong to 36-year-old Jonathan Santos, a resident of Richmond Hill. Charged with multiple counts of criminal possession, criminal sale of a firearm, and more. He's facing up to 30 years in prison in co if convicted. So, again, I'll give Melinda Kratz credit. You know... She deserves all the appreciation that she can. And this is why I'm very grateful that Tiffany Caban did not become our district attorney. Because there probably would have been... These firearms would have probably still been out there. You know? And mind you, this is Curtis Lee's second wife. So, maybe she's being more active... In case Sliwa does win the election, you never know. I mean, look at all this crime. Look at it. There's so much going on here. So, let me read this one. Let's see. Right. Yeah, they have a... Oh, okay, so there's some good news. The NYPD has a person of interest that they want to talk to. Okay. Alright. So we know what happened on the M1 last week. We know what happened to that kid. So now we have a description of a suspect. So let's see if we can give you a description. According to the NYPD... The suspect who was wanted for the October 14th shooting of the 14-year-old boy in Harlem 
the description, they're looking for a black male suspect. Appears to be five foot nine. Last seen wearing a black coat, carrying a cell phone, wearing blue ripped jeans and black sneakers. The blurred picture. We don't know if the NYP wants to question this suspect. We can't make out a clear description. But the NYPD does want information. You can call them at 1-800-577-TIPS-8477. In Espanol, because there is a Spanish population in Harlem. Ocho, 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 cinco, siete. Siete, cuatro, siete, ocho, dos, which is pista. So we know the usual Crime Stoppers website, www.nypdcrimestoppers.com or at NYPD Tips on Twitter. So again, here is a video, and it appears in this video, let's try to take a look and see. I think we got it right here. You can clearly see the suspect wanted is in possession of a handgun. And then let's just read this last article because I'm going to wrap up this video after I read this. So here we go. Four people shot in front of a Brooklyn business in broad daylight. So I don't know what's up with all these daylight shootings lately, but it's it's getting very alarming. Okay, here we go. Police blocked off an area of Junction Parkway in front of Junction Pharmacy and Raj Newsstand at the corner of Nostrand Avenue and Glenwood Road near Flatbush Junction. Four people were shot in the vicinity at 10.30 a.m. on October 21st. Law enforcement sources said one individual was shot in the hand, while three others were hit in their legs, or are likely to survive. So that's some good news, at least. Okay, so... EMS rushed three of the victims to Kings County Hospital. Cops also came across a fourth victim, a 34-year-old male who was shot in the right thigh. In that case, the... Paramedics brought him to Maimonides Medical for treatment. So. Very alarming. Very alarming. And the other three victims were a 30, or 30, three 31-year-old men. One was hit twice in the leg. The second man was struck in the left thigh and right knee. And the third individual took a bullet to the right hand. And the fourth victim... Shot in the right thigh. So. So far there is an ongoing investigation. We do not have any descriptions of suspects. Nor pictures. Videos. So. Very alarming. And I don't even mention in AM New York. They had nothing about the shooting that took place at Van Buren High School. Nothing about it. So. I'm going to conclude this video, and, you know, again, if you're a parent at Van Buren High School, you know, you, you, should, you should have every right to be angry on why information was not given about what happened today, and, you know, it's just a very disturbing situation. I know we're trying to put the kids back in the classroom five days a week, try to regain a sense of normalcy. But this is the last thing anyone needed to worry about right now. And, you know, once again, I'm sorry that I have to keep talking about it. But you know, once again, why it was ignored. This was the reason why. And, you know... As I said, if this was a worse situation, a worse situation, the media would have had to prioritize what happened in Queens Village today. It would have been 
this would have been the top headline on Google News. So, Ryan Laundry's going to hell in general for what he did. The memory of Gabby Petito will live on, hopefully in a positive way. And there is a foundation for her, even. And after today, even after what happened to Fan Buren, all high schools should be talking about dating violence. So that way we never have to talk about this ever again. Thank you for watching.